This image here is number four on my top five grossing images of my entire editorial and personal project archive. Today I'm gonna to talk you through this image. I'm gonna show you how I got it, how much I made from that image, how you can get your archive working for you so you can make money after you click the shutter. And I'll also give you a funny little backstory about convincing the model to stay in the pool after the elephant pooped in the pool. And also tell you an embarrassing story about how I ruined my camera during the shoot as well. So if that interests you, stay tuned and let's talk photography. <music> As always, guys, don't forget to check out my online store at justinmott.com. I've got one-on-one -on -one coaching, I've got presets, and I sell frame prints with shipping within the US and Canada. And then, guys, if you have a second and you want to support the channel, you can hit the join button. And it's not just supporting the channel. You're not paying $4.99 just to support me. You will still get your normal weekly content from me, even if you don't support me, that's okay. But if you do want some extra bonus content, weekly members only, exclusive live streams, and priority comments, and access to my monthly photography contest, you can do that by hitting the join button. You can do that by paying $4.99 a month. All right, guys, first, let me start with the brief for this image. This was from a private client in Phuket, Thailand, and she contacted me because she was interested in my hotel work. She had seen it. She was impressed by it. Thank you very much. And she wanted to hire me to do shots of her home, which she did all the interior design. Now, this might sound like a commercial shoot to many of you out there, and it kind of was. It was a hybrid shoot. The purpose of the images were, one, yes, she wanted a nice collection of images of her house because she was proud of it. But number two, she wanted to pitch her house, her interior design to Vogue Living, to be featured in Vogue Living. So in a way, it was an editorial shoot. In a way, it was a commercial shoot. So the brief was I was going to have about a day and a half. It was a mix of lifestyle shots. She was going to handle a model. We're going to have one model there to do some lifestyle shots around the house, in the pool, some interior, some exterior shots of the house, some detail shots of the house. Everything was going to be done with natural light. And then we were also going to try to do a big hero shot where she was going to have an elephant on the property. And I just had to come up with a creative way to photograph the elephant because elephants being a symbol of Thailand and her having, or at least she claimed to have the largest private pool in Southeast Asia at the time. She wanted to mix those two things. So elephant, model, and pool, that was going to be our big hero shot. We only had about an hour to do it. So for the image usage, breakdown this is what we did and this is very important to establish this stuff ahead of time before you even quote because your quote should be based on this so if you don't know about that stuff you really need to learn it. it's really important so you don't have a lot of headaches later and so you can earn more money later on like I did with this image so we had a breakdown of she could use the images commercially meaning she could use them to sell her house she could use them to rent her house if she wanted she could also use them to pitch to Vogue living and pitch to other editorial magazines so that was the breakdown that was built into the cost and then I could use the images private in my portfolio to promote my work, which is obviously very important. And I could also use the images for print sales later on, but I couldn't use them for advertising, meaning I couldn't sell this image to someone else to use for any sort of advertising purpose. Let's say like, you know, Tourism Board of Thailand or something like that, couldn't do that. So that's the breakdown of usage. And that was again, factored into the total cost and should always be factored in to your total quote. And it was gonna be shot with all natural light, which means I had more time to do more images. It was gonna be less retouching afterwards. Cause again, we're shooting this in a very editorial style and the total deliverables were gonna be about 20 total images. So the day before the shoot, I did some scouting. It's important to do scouting. It's important to bill for that. It's important to build that into your cost. Always bill for your scouting. Scouting isn't just important for preparation, but it's important that you get paid for your time because time is money. So during the scouting, we came up with an idea of where I would like to shoot the model shots and then how we're gonna do the big hero shot with the elephant. And rather than do it at exact sunset, I did it just before sunset because you know I didn't want that, normally I want a beautiful sunset, but here I wanted that sky to be still a little bit more rich blue. I wanted to balance that exposure of underwater and above water, and that was gonna be a tricky exposure. So after scouting the day of, we started the morning, did some model shots. The model was kind of funny because she came from a fashion background and I would say she was kind of an amateur part-time model. She was very nice and very easy to work with, but it took a solid hour to two hours to untrain the fashion side of her. I'm going for lifestyle images, meaning I don't want close-ups of her. I don't want her posing these exotic ways, but like it was really hard to untrain that side of her. But once we did, we got some good shots, got some shots of her reading, some shots of her in the pool. We tested the shot for later on in the day with the elephant. Because it was gonna be so technical, we practiced as much as I could about her swimming underwater, what kind of outfit she would wear, what would her posture be, and then where the elephant was gonna go as well. So I got my detail shots, got the model shots, practiced the shot for later, and as the time approached, we're getting excited, getting a little bit nervous at the same time. Again, this was a lot at stake here, a lot of money at stake to get the elephant there. I knew it was gonna be technically challenging. So for equipment, I had my Canon 5D. I had a couple different fixed prime lenses, and that's kind of always what I use throughout my entire career, personal and editorial work. So I had 
a fixed 24, a fixed 35, and then a fixed 85. Now to get this shot here, my main shot was going to be the model swimming underneath the water. It's gonna use an underwater housing. At the time, I didn't have a proper underwater housing, and that led to the disaster of this camera, so I just had like an underwater bag. So I wanted the model half under the water, I wanted the elephant outside the water, and then I was gonna to try to balance that exposure. So what I did was I made all the necessary settings ahead of time before I put the camera in the bag because this bag right here, this is actually the bag I use. I don't recommend it. I use a proper underwater housing now, but this is a cheap alternative. So this is like a Ziploc bag and you basically tie it up here. So you need to get your settings dialed in ahead of time. So I got my exposure dialed in ahead of time, made sure that I was exposed properly for the outside. So I, set, I put my 24 millimeter in there. It was good to go wide because I knew I could crop in a little bit. And then we basically, I basically had her swim back and forth about like 20 times and I just sort of motor drived everything as fast as I could shoot every possible position, you know, her a little bit lower, her a little bit higher, uh, elephant staying as still as possible. That wasn't a huge problem, but just getting her in the right position, the right posture, and also the right moment with the bubbles going out. I didn't want like too many bubbles, but I wanted a few bubbles. So I just overshot it. I shot at like F11 just to make sure I'd have everything in focus. And again, I did the exposure ahead of time and I couldn't really check in real time because the screen's foggy, goggles are foggy, a lot going on. But I was pretty confident I got the shot, but we didn't have a lot of time for me to check and to work on it more. So I checked kind of quickly. And then I thought like, I still have 15 minutes left here and I'm always the one to like maximize my time. If you saw in my last episode, I'm always pushing the time, trying to get more time, trying to stay a little bit later, trying to get that extra shot because it pays off and it did pay off. So we had about 15 minutes left. They were thinking we were gonna wrap up and I was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we got the elephant in the pool because you have this giant staircase, we could get the model in the pool with the elephant. And the handler was like, yeah, I guess we can. I mean, it's not really like we can put him in the pool. It's more of like coax him or convince him or politely ask the elephant to go in the pool. And you know, they had these giant steps leading in. I asked the owner ahead of time, is this gonna cause any problems like structurally? Are we worried about anything? And she, a little bit hesitant, but I was excited about it. The enthusiasm was there. So she was like, all right, let's go for it. So we got the elephant in the pool and about two minutes into the shot, the elephant released a giant, um, let's just say, poop and the elephant pooped in the pool. The model kind of flipped out, wanted to get out of the pool, but I had just got the camera set right. So I had to talk her into it. She was really nice. She was, she was a trooper about the whole thing. She stayed in, we got some extra shots. Didn't end up really using that shot that much compared to this shot, but I still wanted to maximize my time with this unique situation. So, so I did. Um, you know, got a couple shots, got out really quickly, had a couple other shots to do because it's still sunset. We were done with the elephant, still wanted to get a couple sunset shots. So I rushed to get the camera out and in a stupid way because I was rushing. And that's a nice, that, and that's an important lesson there too is just slow down for a minute sometimes when things are happening like in a fast way before you're heading out, before you're about to do something, check your settings, check to make sure you have your equipment, check to make sure nothing's gonna get ruined. And that, that's where I made an error. I opened the bag too quickly and water got in the bag and, and ruined this camera here. I still keep it to this day as a nice reminder to my team to like be careful without gear. And throughout my entire career, this is really the only camera that I've actually ruined. Of course, after I say that on my next shoot, I'm definitely gonna ruin a camera. And I didn't really know what I had till after sunset and I was able to flip through the images and I was pretty excited to get this shot, pretty excited to show the client. Yes, we got some other shots that I know she was happy with as well, but I, I knew this shot had like other potential besides just impressing that client and that's, that's what I'm always striving for. Like, of course I want to impress the client, but I always think about like, I push myself creatively because my name's attached to stuff, but I also push myself creatively because it financially pays off often. And that's a theme you're gonna see out through this entire series. Like, so the next day I, so the next day I showed up to say goodbye and before I hit the airport and there was like three Thai pool cleaning guys there like scratching their head and it was kind of funny about how they're gonna like, how, first of all, they were like, how did this happen? Is this human feces? And, and if so, how did, how did so much get there? And so that was kind of a funny little scene for me to watch. So I went home, delivered the images to the client. She was really happy with everything, but that wasn't the end of it. You know, this is the important part of making your archive work for you. And this is the important part of having a good contract and understanding your usage rights. So after that shoot, after I was paid for that, again, about $4,000 all in, you're gonna say like, wow, that's, that's not great money. That's one of your top five grossing of all time. No, later on, I won a couple contests with that image. So that equated to a few thousand dollars. But then I also made some money in print sales. Actually, it's not something I actually thought. I never thought this image would sell as a print, but I did some limited edition print sales through a gallery in the US and I sold quite a few of these. And that pushed it over to like more like almost $15,000 with a couple of those big limited edition prints. And then you're gonna say, well, $15,000, your last photo didn't make as much as that. Well, 
minus about the $3,000 for the camera. It came out to about $12,000 for this image. So not bad for one day's worth of work. Not bad for myself having to mildly swim through a little bit of poop, but the model really did the heavy lift in there. So a couple lessons to unpack here. First is having a good contract, understanding your usage and charging for that, and understanding the potential for earnings afterwards, and also just having a good contract so you're not running into problems afterwards. If you wanted to sell an image, but they didn't want you to sell an image, but again, if it's all clear in the contract, you don't have those headaches. And number two, the planning part was important for this shot because it was quite a technically difficult shot. Getting the exposure of the half out of water, half underwater correctly, getting everything lined up perfectly, getting her posture lined up perfectly, all that is hard. I mean, shooting underwater is difficult. You get little beads of water on the underwater housing, that can ruin a shot. And just getting the pool level because people are moving there, you're gonna get like sort of the waves in the pool. So to get everything nailed, took a lot of planning, took a lot of practice. It took a little luck, but it was more, more practice, more planning than when the moment came and everyone was under pressure that I could nail the shot. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments section and stay tuned for the next episode where I'll talk about this image, number three on my top grossing editorial images of all time. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to have a wonderful day.